Hello everyone and welcome to your immediate match reaction for the final game of the season at Ibrox as Rangers eventually ran out 5-2 winners over Dundee but it wasn't without a bit of trial and tribulation and to be honest it wouldn't be Rangers if that wasn't the case this season. I'm joined by Ross Chalmers here on the gantry as we look back over what was quite an eventful game um, and one that the fans were definitely not happy at half time. Rangers were fairly comfortable in the first half. They were dominating possession without really creating a great deal, but it was Dundee who broke the deadlock. A uh, low ball into the box was turned home at the back post. A, a scoffed finish, is it fair to say, from, from Jordan McGee, the Dundee player, made it 1 0. After it was 2 to Dundee, um, a one, in a, 1 in a million shot, maybe not 1 in a million, we'll say 1 in a thousand, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, from Antonio Portales, made it 2 0, and the Rangers crowd were not happy. It's fair to say, and they voiced their displeasure. Ross McCausland brought one back uh, just before half time. Ross, it was a bit of a strange first half. Um, I think it was clear, even from the number of people in attendance, that a lot, everyone's lost faith in this team and that everyone's ready for the season to be over. And the players came out of the tunnel like that, and they actually played like that for a lot of the first half. Yeah, it was, it was flat from the start tonight, to be honest. Uh, I think the support were flat. Understandably, um, I think the players were quite flat to start the game. Thought Dundee were really comfortable in the first half. I really didn't think we showed anything to really break them down. I thought so, um, I thought we had enough of the ball, but I just I just thought at times again we're lacking that kind of creative spark in the final third. And obviously, then you know the the big thing at the moment is when the ball turns over, Rangers just look so vulnerable. Yeah. Like every single time the ball turns over, and it actually doesn't matter the opponent at the moment. They just the team don't look set up to deal with it. And yeah, look, Dundee get those two quick goals. The the first one's really poor for me defending. I think Leon King maybe lets the ball go at the back post. He's not really sure whether there's a man coming in. The second one, like you said, is look. You can always look at it from a Rangers point of view and think we should do better, but it's a great finish, right? So it's the same ball in though as the first goal, wasn't it? Exactly, it, it, carbon copy. Yeah, so. And I think that was dodging on the left hand side. He looks a decent player. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was really disappointing that Rangers didn't really react to that. McCausland's are a two v one on the right hand side, our right hand side, and we just don't deal with it well. But look, we we showed a wee bit of resilience again to to get back in it before half time. Ross McCausland actually does really well here that's because good. he touches the ball behind the defender and he just shows a lot of determination to get there. And that's sometimes you get a little bit of work putting in that graft and and we get back into the game and. Look, half time was it was not a good environment in here, was it? Yeah, um, th there was a lot of booze when the second goal went in. It was oh, wow, that was the whistles, the booze was yeah. I, I've not heard of that for a while, so yeah, I'm sure we're going to come on to the second half now. But the the first half was was disappointing from Rangers, and it just sums up where we are at the moment in this season, Craig. Yeah, we've struggled against Dundee a number of times this season. Why do you why do you think that is? I think they're a really well organised team, they're a physical team, but they're they don't offer a great deal going forward, but we've we've really struggled to to almost control games against them and to to get footholds and, and to almost break that deadlock at times as well. Why do you think that is? Well, I think I, I think if you're talking about the first half, it sounds a bit ridiculous for us to say we struggled when we scored five goals. But I get I get what you're saying. The first half, it was it was very much the same. Maybe in the second half, I think Rangers played a lot better. I done you maybe end of the season, but I I actually don't know what it is because I think we struggled against most teams in the league. I, I agree <laughs> That's with symptomatic of where yeah. We are, I, I agree with you that D Dundee are a, they're a good outfit. Tony Dockett, he's built a really good side. They've got a good couple of players in there like like Lyle Cameron and Luke McCowan and things like that. They they do have good players. Um. And they've had a really good season. But yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Look, it's always injuries as well. You, can you really build attacking rhythm when you're constantly changing your front line like Rangers have been? We just don't seem to, to have enough at the moment. And, and it probably shows you, you know, why we are where we are right now in terms of the league campaign. So yeah, I don't know the obvious answer for that one. I'm sure Philip Clement will be looking at that over the summer in terms of why we've struggled against a few teams in the league. Uh, but look, let's get into the second half and let's talk about some Rangers goals, eh? Because we need a bit of positivity. Yeah, <laughs> well, let's, let's ask. Yeah, but I guess, I guess, two one down at half time. We knew we had to win to prevent Celtic from winning the league tonight. They can obviously go to Kilmarnock tomorrow night and and do that themselves. But the last thing you want to do is is gift them it when they're not even playing. So, how did you feel at half time? How confident were you that we'd get those two goals and we get the victory? 
Oh, I wasn't confident based on that first half display. You were, so I'll give you credit. You I felt four two. Yeah, say four two. So. You always felt Rangers would come out and win it in the second half. I, I just felt we'd seen a lot of the same things we've been seeing in recent weeks in that first half. And like you said, I think the support is kind of aligned at the moment. You you just don't have a lot of faith in the team right now. So yeah, I can't sit there and say that I expected Rangers to come out and win the game. I'm glad they have. Um, they've proved me wrong on that one. But yeah, I can't say I was very positive at half time. Right, let's start looking at the second half. Four Rangers goals. Please. To, four Rangers goals to start looking at, and a, a couple of a couple of um, youngsters coming onto the pitch as well to get some minutes. Um, first, though, it was it was important that we got into the into the second half and an early goal, um, and we did just that. Some really good play from Todd Cantwell out wide. I actually thought he should have let the ball go out for a corner, but he keeps it. He keeps the ball in and he whips a, a great cross in, and it was a a really good header from Cyril Dessers. He's right in the middle of the goal, but headers it down, going into the bottom corner, and it just bounces and then up over the keeper. It was a, a really good finish, and I thought Cyril Dessers actually deserved it tonight. I thought he had quite a good game. Yeah, I have to agree, actually. I know as a team performance in the first half, we weren't great, but there were some individuals that were standing out. I thought Cantwell was good in the first half, I thought Ridvan was good in the first half, and I actually thought Dessers was quite good as well. And yes, a really good header from him again. Dessers, it, he's he seems a lot more composed in front of goal in recent weeks. He's not been getting as many chances, but I just feel there's a wee bit more of a calmness around him. Maybe just maybe the amount of goals he's got this season has kind of built that confidence within himself that if opportunities come, he will take them. So, yeah, look, a really good header. I have to pick out Todd Campbell again there because... We're probably going to come on to it because he obviously scored the third goal, but I thought he really drove Rangers on in that second half. I thought the whole game, yeah. Cantwell was playing with a bit of a point to prove. I can't lie, I'm sitting here frustrated by that because of... He should have played at the weekend. And I think most fans feel that way, that we should have seen Todd Cantwell at the weekend against Celtic and we didn't. And, and I understand that a lot of people are going to look at this game and say, you know, it's a dead rubber. It doesn't matter in these games whether he's turning up, but if Todd Cantwell selected... He can only do what yeah. you know. He can only face the opposition he's up against. And I thought tonight he, he had a point to prove that, and I thought he done it. And to be honest with you, I'd be really surprised if he's not in the team for the remaining two games of this season. And you know, obviously the league campaign, the Scottish yeah. Cup final, because he just gives us something different. And I thought he led by example tonight. He constantly wanted the ball in tough areas. He was being man marked by Silla. Uh, and the Dundee United, uh, Dundee United, Dundee side, and he was he was absolutely booting them up and down the park, and that the that whole yeah, the whole game just yeah. and that was obviously the instruction from Tony Docker just to stick on him and and try and disrupt him, and he didn't let that affect him, and he just kept going and kept going, and he was still able to to you know come up in the big moments tonight and make the difference. So, you know, I just wanted to pick him out now um, before we come on to that goal, but yeah, it's a great header from Dessers again. Yeah, Todd Cantwell was was man of the match by an absolute mile. Um, after they got, after they go back to two each, the, the mood in the stadium lifted quite a bit. There was um, t the fans were back behind the team, and it was it seemed more a matter of when than if Rangers would get that third goal. And it came in a very unlikely fashion. Um, I'm going to say that Todd Cantwell was out wide right and attempted to cross the ball. Um, <laughs> whether he did or not um, is up for debate. Ross says thinks that he meant it, but it was whatever Todd Cantwell did. He whipped the ball in with some pace. It smacks off the far post and goes into the back of the net, and um, it was more than he des It was no more than he deserved. Sorry for his performance. Um, I felt like he was really out there to prove something yeah. tonight, um, and he, he more than did that yeah. uh, for me. I really do hope Todd Cantwell is part of the Rangers squad as we move into next season. Um, but uh, the goal itself, talk, talk about us. Yeah, I would say he. Definitely into it. I don't think he did, but you, you summed it up perfectly there. He deserved he did yeah. deserve a goal tonight with his overall play. So fair play to him. It's it's just one of those ones. I actually feel sorry for the keeper in those instances because you're just convinced it's going out. Like yeah. he's 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 put too much on it. It's it's going over the back the back post or whatever, and it just sticks the inside of the post and you know nestles in the corner. So yeah, look, maybe a little bit fortunate in there, but like I said before. Camwell deserved it with his overall play tonight and that definitely gave the crowd a lift at that point. You got ahead. I never really felt done that you were going to come back into it at that point. They'd made a few changes as well. So like a little bit of luck, but we've not had a lot of that lately. So we'll take it when we get given it. We absolutely will. And um, after that, some nice play between Todd Campbell, Fabio Silva. It just seemed to free the reins a little bit. 
on yeah. the team that it took the, the, the pressure Confidence, off. Confidence, isn't it? The pressure was off tonight, but we struggled to find any rhythm whatsoever in that first half and the second half. It's, it, but you saw very much from the kickoff, so credit maybe, maybe goes to Fluke come on in terms of what did at half time, but you saw pretty much from the kickoff. Um, that momentum was starting to fall. The um, the team was gaining in confidence, and we saw much more freedom and movement from the front line that we've not really seen in many yeah. games recently. Um, the movement of Silva, the movement of McCausland, the movement of Cantwell, the move, even the movement of Dessers. Dessers always gets in good positions. The questions then, how many touches does it take before he hits a shot? But he always gets in good positions, and you can never blame Cyril Dessers for not being in the right place because more often than not, he absolutely is. But it was it was actually enjoyable to watch um, that movement if, uh, as far as it could be in a game like tonight but um, there's a few uh, younger guys that deserve a bit of a mention one uh, that you were um, a bit surprised by um, it's about 60 minutes Mark you, you said you can tell it was sports science is absolutely key. Sports you know. science is absolutely key in, the, in how this works now 60 minutes and 30 seconds as Red Van Yomaz was, was departing the pitch obviously building back up his minutes and, and hopefully it means that he's um, building his way into the, the Scottish Cup final for that. But it was uh, Robbie Fraser that came on at left back and born a Barisic. What did you, you were quite surprised as we, we watched on about that. What did you think? That? Yeah, I was surprised because it is most likely Bona Barisic's last opportunity to, to play at Ibrox. And I expected to see him at some point. Uh, I don't know if the manager has taken into consideration the opinion of Borna Barisic at this point. I don't know. I think most of the supporters would have given Borna Barisic, a, you know, a, you know, a round of applause and, and shown a lot about encouragement. I, I just thought that was surprising. But it's, it's great to see Robbie Fraser get a chance. Uh, actually, I thought he'd done really well. I thought he did as well. Yeah, yeah. I thought he'd done really well in that, that, that second half. You can see his pace down that left-hand side. Had a again. lot of pace. Yeah. Willing to drive at his man as well, which is something we haven't seen on the left-hand side of Borna Barisic. Yeah. So that was really encouraging. So, yeah, look, like, it's maybe it's maybe out with the old and out with the new, isn't it? Bob Barisic is most likely to leave, and, and maybe Clement is looking at it that way. You know, it's an opportunity for me to to get some of the youth team in and give them an opportunity. So that was good to see. But yeah, I, I felt a little bit for Borna Barisic, and we'll maybe touch on the end when he was rocking around the pit because he didn't look he, he looked quite emotional, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, we'll touch on that at the end. You maybe see us looking over the top of the camera at points because the players are doing their warm down in Borna Barisic. Is out there in um, alongside Kamaru and some of the others, but we'll come on to sort of reactions at the end. Um, another youngster that got his chance, Leon Young King, started the game, but he went off. It looked like a touch of cramp, um, which after is after it's 70 minutes, which is understandable, isn't it? He's not played a lot of minutes lately, has he? Yeah, I mean, you would like to think a professional footballer can play a 20 minutes, but um, maybe that's me expecting too much. Um, but he came off with cramp and he was replaced by Cole McKinnon, um, James Tavernier moved into centre half where he played pretty confidently I think it's fair to say he was pretty, he was pretty tidy um, was uh, was no mistakes I think is always the, the, the <laughs> is that where we got to at this <laughs> point, <laughs> where we got to this point. Um, but he was there and then McKinnon out, out right back and I thought he did pretty solidly he just did the basics when he was there um, defended well pushed forward um, tried to pick the passes I was um, it was good to see these young guys getting a wee bit of a chance to beat them. Obviously, playing the best versus best thing doesn't seem like they get much football, but these guys seem to stay pushing for the first team. Yeah, look, it's always great to see uh, young players get an opportunity, and it's maybe not the best time at the moment because of the atmosphere around the club. I'm sure they won't be looking at it that way. They'll be looking at it that they can come into the Rangers side and and hopefully make an, an impression on the manager and put themselves into. You know his thoughts for next season because that is something I think as a support we want a little bit more of. We want to see more opportunities given to a lot of the B team and, and, and the academy players and I think we do have some good players in that academy. They've just not been given an opportunity. I think the big one for everyone is Alex Lowry. I think, you know, the, the, the boy has ability. Yeah. It's just trying to to maximise that and get more out of him. He didn't come on the pitch tonight. Of course, he's been struggling with an injury, but maybe maybe we might see him um, at Hearts at the weekend, if you remember, he did do pretty well at, did, yeah. at in Castle a couple of years ago, at the end of the season. So, look, maybe it's another opportunity for him to come in at the weekend. I'm not sure, but yeah, overall, great to see young boys getting a getting an opportunity, and and that's what it's all about, really. That that's got to be part of the model uh, at this club. You know, we have great academy facilities. We've got to be making the most of it. We have to give these boys opportunities. We absolutely do. Uh... 
final subs of the of the game were uh, Kamar Roof coming on, uh, Scott Wright, and someone else that I have completely forgotten. Keenan Dill. Keenan Dill, there we go. Um, and uh, probably just over 10 minutes left. But Scott Wright made a huge impact when he came on, fed the back in it with a goal. Um, I think uh, it was tried to clear it off the line, but it was it was in the back of the net before um, before we could, um, just securing the win and making everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Yep. There wasn't going to be any surprises at the end of the game. And then he, he popped up with a really good finish again, left-hand side, cutting in and uh, finding the far corner to make it 5 to Scott Wright is gearing up for him, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> it looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like it. He knows he's got a Hamden game on the horizon and he wants to be part of that. Yeah, that's all you can ask for with substitutions. That's all you can ask for. They come on, they make an impact. That's maybe... <laughs> a wee bit more than we expected from Scott Ray, but look, he's came on, he's got two goals like I said about the, the young players coming in the squad, he, he puts himself in the, in the manager's thoughts going into these next two games he's probably what I'd expect to see start the game at Tim Castle next week to, to finish the season has he, has he done enough over the last couple of months to start the game at Hampton? No, I don't think so um, but he can, only, he can only do what he's done tonight, yeah. come in and try and make an impact and he's done it. Yeah, he absolutely has so Rangers run out 5-2 winners Um it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things, really. But Rangers run out five to winners and head to Tynecastle with the chance of winning four of the last five games, um, despite the negativity around the team. But it was, it's the one that mattered that we that we didn't win. So um, that's kind of that for the season at Ibrox. Um, <laughs> not the kind of Which the we could have ended on a yeah. positive there, but it's difficult at the moment. I think yeah. I think everyone will be the same. It's listening to this. It's it's very difficult to move past it. Yeah, absolutely is. Um, but. Rangers players did the traditional walk around the pitch at the end of the end of the season just to thank the fans and for the thing that fans to show any appreciation. Shows you how depleted we are as well because there was about ten of them on the pitch at I the know. end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, was, there was a very small it used to a big, a big <laughs> squad of people there. There was how everyone um, walking around the pitch. Um, not many fans stayed. For it. I think most notably Union Bears walked out right on the full time whistle, yeah. um, which was very noticeable. Um, but they they um, spoke with us, I guess, by walking out and not showing any appreciation to to um, to the players for for the season. Um, quite in contrast to what we saw for the likes of Morelos last year, and Ryan Kent and Scott Arfield, there was it's quite a, that was quite stark in the yeah. contrast that that we saw there. Um, what did you make of that? First of all. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe we should have expected it yeah. based on the result of the weekend and a lot of the feeling amongst the support. But at the same time, when I seen it, I, I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. But look, the Union Bears are are great for this club and the, and the atmosphere they provide. And and if they aren't happy with what they're doing, and, and that goes to, to everyone in the stadium, not all the support, you you can... You, know, you you pay your way to this club. A, a lot of people spend a lot of money following Rangers, and, and you're allowed to to give your opinion and and really they've, they've shown it with yeah. in the stadium that I, I don't have any problem with that. It wasn't I, to be honest with you. I would rather it was like that than they stayed behind and there was maybe a toxic atmosphere and things like that. I I think that makes more of an impression on yeah. people because they are so important so important to the medium and the support and, and they're there no matter what all the time exactly when the moment they're not there is when it's when you realize it probably has the biggest impact so um i think that was very fair from yep. from union bears to to do that and a quite a significant show of, of how they're feeling to the players um Kamarif was on his own doing walk around i don't know what was going on there he was you could tell he was leaving, you could tell he, was leaving. He, just, he just wanted the, he just wanted his moment himself didn't he really and i, I don't mean that as i don't reason. know if it was that or if he was just fed up <laughs> it was just like um i'm fed up with, with this team i'm fed up with no i don't or, i don't i don't think so no. i think he just i think he just wanted his moment with the support he wanted yeah. to stand in front of the support himself and and we see that with Scott Field last year, and that was maybe down to interviews and things he's doing. But he walked around the ground himself, and he and he took that opportunity with the fans. And I think, I think Kmar Roof wanted that. Kmar Roof is it's such a frustrating and disappointing for me because maybe this season we haven't seen a lot of it, but such a good footballer. Yeah. Like it's just such a shame we've not been able to keep him fit, and I think that comes down to the club because. We're seeing a, a huge injury list at the moment, so they, we can't say that the club are blameless in that. And then maybe it comes down to Kmar Roof himself. And, to, and what, you know, he's carried so many injuries over the year. 
years we're not sure but it's just such a shame because he was such a good player yeah. his movement around the box I, I still don't think we have I think his, his movement is good it's not the same as KMR Roof and he was just deadly and it's just so disappointing not being able to see a lot of that and look I did feel from walking around the ground because we, we do have to remember sometimes I know it's difficult they are human beings like I know I know they get paid a lot of money and I, I totally accept that but I'm sure Kieran Roof isn't happy about being injured. You know, yeah. it, it, it is difficult to deal with a professional footballer. Um, and I know everyone has different opinions on that. That's just the way I look at it. I, I, I felt for him. Um, but look, it's absolutely the right time to let Kieran Roof go. And, and I hope he goes on. I hope he solves his injury issues. And I hope he you know, gets a good two, three, four years more of his career yeah. somewhere. And and look, I'll be really, really happy for him, but it's definitely the time for KMR Roof and Rangers to, to part ways. It's the right decision. Yeah, a few other interesting points to note as we, as we finish this podcast. A few other interesting notes to to talk about. Um, sorry, JB, for, for those of you who watched the pod, JB is um, shitting from the upper deck as we record the podcast at the moment. So big hello to, to JB <laughs> up there. Um, but just a few other points for what crowd, I think... Um, Ryan Jack's absence. Ryan Jack was there for the warm-ups tonight. He was out on the pitch with the with the substitutes for the warm-ups tonight, but no sign of Ryan Jack. And and the um and the walk round at the end potentially a better surprise with most fans, if not all fans, expecting him to leave at the end of the season. There was also um, Borna Barisic was there walking round very slowly at the end of uh, at the the end of the pack at the, the back of the team. Clearly emotional, Ross. Clearly, yeah. clearly taking in what what he could, but also clearly disappointed. One, he didn't go on the pitch, and two, I probably disappointed that there's so few, there were so few fans left as well. What did you? Bonabarisic has been such a an up and down player for Rangers. We spoke about earlier, and we said Bonabarisic's first two two or three years, he was um, he was so important to how we played. He was so important to our team. Um, him and James Tavernier whipping crosses in was was a vital part of us scoring goals and the way the team played. The last couple of years, he's fallen away massively um, from that. I don't think his uh, performances at Celtic Park over the years have really endeared him to the fans very much at all. What did you make of what you saw from Borna Barisic at the end there? And, and what, what, did you, what do you feel he deserved? Do you feel a bit sorry for him? Yeah, honestly, my initial reaction was I just felt sorry for him. Uh, and <laughs> maybe I'll be alone in this but like you said, I, the first two, three years that Borna Barisic was here, he was such a he was such a great left back. Um, the technique of his crossing was unbelievable. I think I mean Tavernier is a great he has a great delivery, but it's still not anywhere near what Borna Barisic was in yeah. terms of his peak. And yeah, like you said, the last couple of years he's lost things physically and he's and he's been here for too long. And and it's such a shame when you know you do have players like that come into the club and they make such a positive impact and we can all see how good a player they are and they just stay here for a wee bit too long. Wouldn't say outstay their welcome, but you get what I mean. We just yeah. we haven't refreshed things and and Borna has been one of those players and unfortunately uh, he has had a lot of really poor for performances, especially against Celtic and people don't forget those. Yeah. So I can see both sides of it, but I, look, I just just from a just from another one human being to another at the end there, I just I just felt bad for him. You know, I did because he just he looked really emotional. He was walking himself, head down. And you know, look, the, the it wasn't like he was getting any abuse or anything like that. It wasn't. I just think maybe you look at you look at last year with Scott Arfield and Morelos and McGregor and Kent walking around the pitch and things like that and what they, the send off they got and it's not a criticism of the sport, by the way. I totally understand how we feel at the moment. I just, I just felt bad for Borna Barisic. Yeah. That was all. Um, and again, look, uh, I will go. I won't look back at the last couple of years for Borna Barisic, but I'll certainly look back at the the initial few years and and that title we won with him. And and I wish him all the best. I hope he kicks on again and, and finds somewhere and maybe a league that's more suitable to to his technical ability and maybe doesn't require as much physically. But yeah, again, like I said about Kemar Roof, it's it's time for him to move on. I just felt sorry for him a wee bit at the end. In terms of the Ryan Jack one, I did find that really interesting. Yeah. And I'm not... Is this when you say Ryan Jack's going to be off the new contract? Well, I'm not. I don't want to create any headlines here or any or any or start a rumour or things like that. But look, maybe maybe someone can tell us in the comments what they think about that. But I, I just think if you're leaving this club and it's definitive, you're on that pitch. I, and, and, and we've seen him. He was he was doing the warm-up drills. He wasn't in the squad, but he was he was here tonight. 
I just, I don't know, maybe maybe it's not worth making too much of that. Um, but yeah, I did, I did find that one interesting. I don't know how you feel, or maybe I'm just making something of nothing there. Yeah, you're talking about not making too much of anything. As I watched Todd Cantwell <laughs> take pictures with his family out in the middle of the Ibrox Park, and um, what I said earlier was that I really hope Todd Cantwell was here next season. So I am not going to read too much into that. At the moment, the fact that they're, ta- they're taking photos in front of an empty Ibrox um, and what is the last game here this season. So, um, fingers crossed, that doesn't mean a single thing other than a souvenir. Um, Craig's dying to go and ask him for a picture, you can tell. Oh yeah, I'll be I'll be, I'll be, be off this gantry in two seconds for that. I may have a broken ankle when I land, but I'll be, I'll be off this gantry in two seconds for that to get that picture. Um, no, thank you very much, uh, Ross, for joining us. Thank you very much, everyone who has tuned in to to all of our coverage from Ibrox, whether it be on our um, X channel um, or whether it be across um, the YouTube channel as well. Really enjoyed having you along. We've really enjoyed the privilege of being able to do this from Ibrox. It's, um, we're just normal Rangers fans. Uh, we've got all got season tickets. We love supporting the club and and, and talking about it. So the, the privilege to be able to... We don't take this for granted. Yeah, we definitely don't take this for granted and um, to be able to come in and, and cover and support Rangers um, from this pr- this privileged position at Ibrox as is, is an owner. So thank you very much all for joining us. Um, Rangers run out 5-2 victors against Dundee in the final home game of the season. Rangers are away to Tynecastle before we head to the last meaningful game of the season, uh, the Scottish Cup final at Hamden against Celtic. There's plenty more to come from the TII team, so make sure you've you've subscribed to the channel. Do like the video if you've if you enjoyed me and Ross's chat. It can be questionable at times, but hopefully... Hopefully, hopefully you have. Um, but thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Until next time, goodbye.